and uh, I'm really excited to be with you for about the next 60 minutes as we sort of um, start to dig into uh, the high level layers of uh, PowerShell. And really what we're going to talk about is how do we kind of set the table for you to build on your uh, learning going forward? Because PowerShell is a very powerful tool. There's a lot available uh, within it. And so we're going to talk today, you know, covering off on all the various uh, the, the various specifics of PowerShell in 60 minutes would be, you know, impossible. But one of the things we are going to talk about is how do you find help, right? How do you find assistance? How do you sort of find information that can help you breadcrumb your way further along through your journey to learn PowerShell? So great to be here with you. It's an honor. Uh, very, very uh, uh, excited for this next 60 minutes. So let's go ahead and and get rolling. So um, as Moray said, there is a Q&A box. Please feel free to take advantage of that. Uh, if it is a question that is sort of relevant to the context that we're currently uh, discussing, I'll try to answer it as they come in. If it's something that maybe is better suited for an answer at the end, I'll do so at the end. But yes, please feel free to post your questions. I want this to be as you know interactive as it can be, right? So, <clears throat> pardon me, what are the reactors, right? Well, the reactors, I think, are an awesome tool that we have available to us, especially in this day and age where everything is virtual, right? So reactors are an opportunity for us as community members, technical professionals, right, to come together to meet, to learn from one another, to hear about maybe new technologies that we haven't had experience or exposure, experience with or exposure to, or maybe share information about technologies that we maybe have uh, some more experience in. And it's just a great community, right? An opportunity for us as a community to come together and help us all on this journey to master technology, right? And <clears throat> technology is amazing. Uh, this industry, I love it. Uh, there's never going to be a day that I wake up and say, hey, I've uh, learned everything there is to learn. All the challenges have been, uh, you know, conquered. I know that's not going to be the case. I know there are going to continue to be challenges. That's why I love this industry. But uh, these types of things, right, the reactors, these communities where we can come together uh, and work together, we can help one another, uh, you know, through those challenges in a more efficient and effective manner. So it's great to have you here. Uh, please continue to take advantage of these as much as you can, because I think they are an awesome tool. Given that, <clears throat> you know, there are uh, the nice thing, right? The good news is that there are options available all across the globe. I do hope that uh, at some point in the not too distant future, we'll be able to return to a time when we can, um, you know, meet in person again. Uh, but until such time, you know, these types of virtual sessions and meetups can be very, very beneficial. So um, one quick thing I just want to mention, you know, this is a community, right? We are uh, here to learn from one another. We're here to work together. We're here to help one another. Um, so let's just kind of keep some things in mind, right? Be aware of others, be friendly and patient. You know, learning takes patience, both on your part, uh, if you're the one learning, or on your part, if you're maybe the one helping someone learn, right? So let's be patient, be friendly, be welcoming and respectful, be open to all questions and viewpoints, be understanding of differences and, uh, you know, at, at, um, of, of most sort of importance, utmost importance, be kind and considerate to others. Again, this is a community. This is an opportunity for us to work together, come together and grow together. So great to have you here. That's sort of the intro. Let's kind of move into uh, what we're really gonna be talking about. <clears throat> That's introduction to PowerShell. Um, I'm going to skip this. That's just a little bit more about me. Maria already told you some uh, of uh, the information about me. <clears throat> so I have been doing this for about 25 plus years. So I've had a chance to see a lot of things and make a lot of mistakes and learn a lot of things along the way. The one thing that I really want you to sort of know about me is that I have a, a real passion for learning, not just uh, and that passion for learning is for, for yours and for mine as well. Right. So uh, that's what I want you to know about me, and that's what I want to be able to take into our session as we as we proceed. All right, so let's go ahead without further ado and start to dig into PowerShell. 
So what is PowerShell? All right, so this is from the Microsoft documentation. I'm not gonna read this, but I am gonna highlight specific sort of phrases within this information that I think are very, very key. It's cross-platform, right? So that's very cool. PowerShell is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It's a task automation solution, right? So we can use it to automate tasks. We can use it for ad hoc uh, administration. We can use it to build scripts that can uh, be run on an either scheduled basis or as needed to uh, initiate and execute you know, a set of instructions in an automated fashion. It's made up of a command line shell, uh, a scripting language, and then a configuration management framework. And the configuration management framework is actually uh, quite, quite ri uh, rich. So let's dig into each one of these, the shell and the scripting language, right? What, what, what does that mean? Well, as a shell, right, you might be familiar with other terminals, uh, other shells, right? Like Bash, for example. Um, PowerShell is kind of different. And I, I think it's cool. It, um, you know, gives you, um, why do you want Power? So David asked the question, why do you want PowerShell in Linux when you have Bash? That's a, a great question. You, you may not, right? You may not need it, but we're going to talk about some of the differentiators of PowerShell versus, uh, versus Bash actually right now. So great question, great thought. Uh, one of the things that makes PowerShell different from uh, Bash is that rather than just operating on text, right? PowerShell operates uh, against objects. Everything is an object within PowerShell. And it's built on the .NET framework, or at least the .NET core framework for cross-platform. Um, I guess there's only one .NET uh, framework now. But it <laughs> gives you access to all of those features and capabilities that are available within .NET uh, underlying PowerShell. So in that respect, it does give you some you know, additional options, some additional power. Is Bash still a valid tool? Absolutely, right? But PowerShell might uh, be uh, something that you uh, find useful for some of the reasons that we're gonna talk about here, right? So that uh, ability to uh, operate against inputs and outputs as objects versus just plain text. Some other features of the shell itself is it has a robust command line history so we can arrow up and down just like we would in any shell, right? To get access to previous commands that we have executed and the amount available to you is pretty uh, vast, okay, as far as the history goes. There's tab completion, command prediction. That's very nice, right? As you're typing within a terminal uh, uh, for PowerShell, within a PowerShell terminal, if I enter a few uh, characters of a command or the characters that I remember of a command and I hit tab, it will autocomplete if it can match uniquely. If it can't match uniquely when I hit tab, it will show me available options, which is nice, right? And that works for both the commands as well as the parameters. Um, there are uh, There's support for aliases, right? So if you have a long command that maybe is, uh, or the command name is uh, longer, right? You can shrink that down to, um, you know, make, make it more simple. A good example is uh, there are PowerShell commandlets for listing the contents of a directory, right? Well, <clears throat> there are also aliases available within PowerShell. One of them is ls, right? Which is what we would use to list directory contents in uh, Linux or Mac, right? So ls is an alias and dir is an alias. So within PowerShell, you can use the longer commandlet to list the uh, directory contents or you can use ls or dir as a shortcut or alias okay it also has a pipeline for chaining commands which is pretty rich right and the, what the pipeline allows us to do is take the uh, output from one commandlet and immediately pipe it as input into uh, a second commandlet all in one line of code and in fact we could then pipe the result of that into a third uh, as well PowerShell can be used in both Windows and Linux. 
Bash cannot be used on Windows. Uh, my only disagreement there would be there's Git Bash, and then if you run Windows subsystem for Linux, I mean, you're technically running Ubuntu natively within Windows, so I don't know that you're necessarily wrong there, but that's a good, um, that's a good, a good call out. And then so you can use ls, rm, cat, and other bash commands. I'm not sure about uh, rm and cat. If there isn't an alias already, you can certainly create an alias to give you the capabilities to do that. But ls, I know, is definitely already included. And actually, uh, why don't we just do this real quick? Let me open up this. Inside PowerShell is some of them available. Okay, so uh, that's not the one I wanted. My apologies. Let me open up uh, PowerShell. We've got a lively group today. I think that's awesome. I love that folks are so interactive and asking so many questions. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, get alias is a commandlet that we can run. So there's RM. So there is an alias for RM. Let's see about cat was the other one that was asked about. Uh, there is not one for cat. Oh yeah, there is, my, my apologies. So yes, uh, your question, can those be used as well? Those can be used, right? I can uh, clear this if I type LS, it's as though I you know, did a, a list in, uh, in Linux or if I did a DIR, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> the pipeline, I just want to mention, is really powerful, right? The pipeline, think about the pipeline like a set of train cars. As this helps me anyway. If I have a set of train cars uh, connected, right, and I provide input to one train car, that train car might do some processing and transform that data. There will be output. Pipe, uh, the pipeline or piping allows me to take that output and then move uh, the, uh, you know, that into the next train car where it might further transform and process, right? And then uh, that might return output that could trans or that could be transferred into a, another car, if you would, right? So that pipeline is just a way for us to chain things together where the output of one uh, acts as the input to another in a single line of code. So the question is, is all syntax switches the same? Not exactly, but you will find a lot of the same uh, common uh, features. Looping, you know, for loops, do loops, do while, do until. Uh, you will find, uh, you know, conditionals. You will find uh, switches, um, selects. They're a little different. The syntax is a little different, um, but you will find a lot of those uh, same commonalities, which was the question there. And then there's a very rich in console help system that we're actually going to look like, uh, look at as part of our uh, sort of discussion today. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, now move over to the scripting language, right? <clears throat> because, you know, uh, executing activities here within a terminal uh, are, are good, are valid, can be valid for, you know, specific ad hoc configuration or administration uh, commands that I need to execute. But where uh, a lot of the power comes in, and we see this with uh, other terminals as well, is building those statements into a, a reusable script that can then be executed again and again, right? I can either execute it on a schedule or I can execute it whenever I need to. And it allows me to bundle up, right, a set of commands for automation using you know, just the uh, script name itself. So that can be very powerful. There's also a lot of extensibility within PowerShell uh, relative to you know, building your own functions, you know, building something akin to classes. Um, there are dictionaries, there are arrays, obviously array lists. Uh, let's see, the audio seems to be disabled for attendees like myself. Um, is uh, everyone else able to hear me okay? Are there others that are having issues with? Uh, works for you, okay. Okay, great. Uh, Eamon, my, my apologies, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, okay, all right, great. Thanks for confirming, folks. Um, there's this, uh, you know, rich extensibility mechanism um, uh, in place here 
that allows us to sort of build um, uh, multiple things out, you know, multiple sort of reusable elements within PowerShell that can make our lives easier from a PowerShell perspective. And then there's built-in support for common data formats like CSV, JSON, XML. You can take an uh, object, you can serialize it out to JSON using a commandlet. You can take a string of JSON text. You can deserialize it into a collection or object structure within PowerShell. So a lot of power there. And again, as we continue to build this out, <laughs> we build out our script with all of these different commands. There are even, uh, you know, sort of test. Um, there are even sort of uh, test. Uh, there's Pester, which is one that you can use to test uh, to automatically unit test. PowerShell scripts as well. So a lot of the features you'd expect to see in a programming language. Um, all right, so um, let's go ahead and keep uh, moving through this. And let's dig in a little bit to some of the features, right? So I, I have a few slides. We are gonna get to code as well. So uh, my apologies uh, if this is a little boring, but hopefully this information will be helpful uh, in combination with the uh, with the coding that we're gonna do together as well, okay? So PowerShell utilizes commands and commandlets. Commandlets is a very common term within PowerShell. It's just a type of command. You're actually uh, able to build your own uh, commandlets in .NET or .NET Core. And there's a pretty uh, rich uh, capability built within PowerShell for remote connectivity and management. Right, so remotely connecting to another machine, obviously, if you have the right uh, permissions, and then uh, you know managing that machine, right, or even attaching to a, a shell session, a PowerShell session on that machine to execute uh, activities. Okay, installation. <clears throat> How do we get it right? <clears throat> well, on modern, the good news, I guess, is on modern versions of Windows, uh, it's going to be installed by default. Okay, now, it may not be the latest version, uh, depending on your platform, but there will be a version installed. For other platforms, there are installation, uh, installation paths available. Now, if uh, the one that comes installed uh, directly with your, or that comes automatically on your Windows machine, if you want to upgrade that, there is a way to do that as well. And uh, using Docker and containers, among other approaches, uh, it's possible to run multiple versions side by side. And the reason you might want to do that is because um, some uh, older scripts, right, may not support features available in the newer versions of PowerShell. So you might need a chance, depending on if you have older scripts that you're maintaining, you might need to have access to an older version that is consistent. Um, but then you might also want to be able to take advantage of some of the newer features. Now, obviously, you could, you know, upgrade or, or modify, refactor that script. Um, but um, having that as an option can be very, very valuable. All right, what about dev tooling? Okay, so PowerShell includes a dedicated terminal, which I showed you here, right? PowerShell also includes something called... Uh, Integrated Scripting Environment, ISE. Um, now, <clears throat> um, this, I will, you know, sort of caution you, the ISE is kind of considered to be, I guess, on the way out. Uh, but from a uh, development environment or scripting environment, you'll see a lot of the same features within the ISE that you would in, you know, another development environment. The ability to, you know, enter text, and then the ability to execute, um, you know, statements uh, ad hoc here, uh, access to help information here. So this can be, you know, nice. Um, this is uh, one option potentially available, but again, I think the intent is for this to sort of go away. And the uh, ultimately, the sort of target option for us is uh, Visual Studio Code. And so if you don't have Visual Studio Code, um, you know, if you just search for download Visual Studio Code, you should be able to get there quickly uh, with uh, installation instructions for whatever platform you're currently running on. And once you have uh, Visual Studio Code installed, a great option, uh, and the reason I like Visual Studio Code is because it is um, extensible. 
right? If I click this icon here, I'll see access to multiple extensions in the marketplace, one of which is PowerShell. And so <clears throat> my recommendation, and I think this sort of general uh, recommendation going forward, uh, is usually that we um, utilize Visual Studio Code plus the PowerShell extension. Now, that's not your only option. You you can, if you wanted to, you know, execute uh, code uh, as a script, you wanted to build out a script, you could do that in, in Notepad, right? But as far as a more feature-rich development experience, Visual Studio Code plus PowerShell, uh, the PowerShell extension, I think, is a is a great option. All right, <clears throat> so let's uh, look at running our first PowerShell commands. And what we're going to do is I'm going to post this into the chat. Please feel free to hit that uh, link and follow along. Also, you, you can use Git with Visual Studio Code, correct? Absolutely, David. Great call out. Yes, uh, there is very, very rich uh, integration support built into Visual Studio Code for uh, Git and GitHub integration. So good, good call. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and if we hit this link, you should be taken to this uh, Microsoft Learn module, which is, uh, in my opinion, an awesome platform. Uh, this, uh, you know, these Learn modules give us the ability to uh, get some, uh, you know, exposure to many, many different types of technologies. Right, many many different types of languages, many many different types of uh, sort of approaches or use cases, and it's nice because it in combines sort of inline documentation, links, and uh, often interactive uh, exercises. There's also uh, you know a knowledge check. You can, as you proceed through this, you can um, you know gain points, uh, and with those points, then you can sort of uh, you know earn trophies. So kind of fun, I guess, in that respect. But really, the, the the power I think is in the learning capability that's wrapped up within the. Uh, oh, great, good deal. All right, so if we click in here to the introduction, uh, I'm going to skip this. What is PowerShell? Basically, all of these words. Definitely go back and read this. Would would strongly suggest you go back and re-review this. But um, that's basically uh, a lot of what I've already said on the slides, so we're going to skip there. <clears throat> and what we're going to get taken to is uh, a window like this. And um, one of the cool features about the uh, Microsoft Learn platform is, in a lot of uh, with a lot of modules, you'll see uh, the ability to integrate with uh, right in browser a sandbox that allows us to sort of try things without necessarily having them installed already on our system. So if I click Activate Sandbox, it uh, may uh, ask you to you know, sort of authenticate. I had a session uh, of this last night, so I don't know if it's still gonna remember my information from there. But what might happen when you hit Activate Sandbox, it might say, hey, uh, what account do you want to log in with? You'll log in with that account, and then it should uh, activate something on this side, right, on the right-hand side that you can then begin uh, interacting with. So let's let this finish uh, its sort of setup. And what we're going to do is just look at uh, briefly, uh, you know, some options that we have available to us within, <laughs> within um, PowerShell. All right, so I'm going to clear my screen so we can get rid of all of this and give us uh, more real estate. Now, uh, the question, you know, why would I use PowerShell when I have Bash? And that's a, that's not a bad question for sure. But one of the cool things that you can uh, see here, uh, and we're going to talk about the get member command line, but if I take a number like 19 and I pipe it to get member, here I'm going to see rather than just a simple number, it has a .NET type associated to it. 
int32. And it has all of these other methods associated to it as well, right? So it just gives us potentially, right, uh, a little bit more rich uh, sort of um, kind of uh, interface and ability to sort of integrate and operate uh, on, uh, you know, the various sort of use cases or problems we're trying to solve. All right, Ricardo had a great question. With all the different technologies available for tasks, automation, RPA, VBA, macros, et cetera, what are the best use cases to use PowerShell? Um, you know, I, I, I know this is going to be kind of a stinky answer, but it, it really depends, right? It depends on your solution, uh, your particular problem. It depends on your comfort level, right? Or the comfort level of your team. Uh, PowerShell, I will say, <laughs> is available and capable of handling many, many different types of uh, challenging problems, right? And there are a lot of modules. You can leverage PowerShell for doing things like uh, managing your Azure resources, right? Using the Azure PowerShell library. Alternatively, you can use the Azure CLI, right? Which would be a different route. So it really just depends on kind of your comfort level, uh, what your organization uh, is working with. I will say, PowerShell can be used for pretty much anything, just about. I've seen it used to automate the uh, processing of uh, creation of a PowerPoint presentation from a set of Lucid chart diagrams with uh, a set of common text, right? So instead of somebody, it was 200 and something Lucid chart diagrams, instead of copying each one of those uh, to a different page in the PowerPoint uh, deck, using PowerShell, uh, the person was able to basically automate that generation. So it's very, very, okay. actually my question was specifically in Linux. Why would I wanna have PowerShell in Linux when I already have Bash? Okay. Yeah, okay, so we got a couple of good things coming through here and I wanna kind of keep us moving, but um, in terms of what you can use it for, Matt's has a great uh, call out. Uh, mainly OS and backend applications like AD. That's a great, you know, from a remote man, uh, management administration perspective, uh, those are definitely good use cases as well. And then David, you know, why would I necessarily uh, install in Linux? You, you may not, right? You may not, um, but it's good to know that you have it as an option, right? Again, given some of the capabilities that we have available. Great questions, great interaction, love it. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of other things here within our window. Let me clear this. So um, if I type, uh, so let me do this. Variables are basically, uh, variables are created uh, within PowerShell using a dollar sign. So if I do dollar sign var equals 19, and then I type dollar sign var, I'll see 19, right? Um, <laughs> there are also uh, a set of, um, you know, sort of pre-installed or predefined variables that we can utilize. If I use the commandlet get variable, then I'll see a lot of those uh, variables, predefined variables available, and I'll see the one that I created here. Okay. And so one of the variables, the predefined variables, is this uh, PS version table. If I uh, clear this and I hit dollar sign PS version, now I'm going to hit tab and it auto completed. So kind of nice. That will show me, you know, information about the version that's currently installed in this session. Now it looks like text, but what we're actually seeing is that there is uh, an object structure that underlies, right? So uh, PS version, dollar sign PS version table dot OS allows us to get this specific property using what's called dot notation, okay? So uh, one of those we can use is the PS version and that will take this sort of collapsed view and give us maybe more of a an expanded view, right? So we see semantic versioning in play here. We got a major, a minor, and a patch. All right, so it's formatted as a table, but there are options and capabilities to format it many, many different ways uh, as well. Good call out, Matt's. 
I've used it as a teacher to create a complete lab environment in Azure or locally. It is great for those types of automation activities. So really good call out. All right, so just a brief sort of introduction. We'll kind of go back and forth uh, there. And uh, the one thing I, how to know when a value is an object as PS version seems to be. Um, so if we do uh, PS version, table.ps version and pipe that to get member. We'll see that it is a an object. Everything in PowerShell is an object. This get member commandlet can be utilized, as I said, if we wanted to just take and do uh, get member. If I spell correctly. You know, I can see the various underlying uh, capabilities within that object as well. OK. So let's, uh, we'll come back to that. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the one thing I want to sort of call out that I think is, uh, you know, potentially interesting, but also challenging. If I, uh, within this PowerShell window, type get command, these are the commands I currently have available to me that are currently loaded or modules that are currently imported into this environment, right? Which is a lot. And so I think that can be kind of overwhelming, <clears throat> at least for me, you know, not only which command do I need, but how do I use it, right? And so that's what we're going to talk about next. So we're going to talk about uh, getting help with PowerShell using PowerShell, which is kind of cool. So PowerShell commandlets, they are compiled commands, right? They're built around a verb noun naming convention, verb dash noun. And we can kind of see that uh, even here, right? Wait, use, update, that's the verb, dash. And then the noun is format data, help, list, AZ VPN gateway, NAT rule, et cetera. Okay, so that's the common convention is verb dash noun. And they're developed in .NET or .NET Core uh, and then can be compiled and made available for use uh, within PowerShell. You can import a module that you have created and have access to those uh, commandlets uh, within your environment and make them available to others as well. There are several commands that are available out of the box. That's what OOTB means, but there are also a ton of others uh, available in modules for import. I mentioned Azure. There's uh, an exchange, as uh, Matt's called out, uh, you know, Many, many different types of platforms, depending on what you're looking from a collaboration perspective, Office 365 or Office, you know, um, you basically uh, the ability to manage, you know, sort of our uh, in the cloud accounts. That is all from a collaboration perspective. There are modules that we can import and uh, commandlets that are available to us for doing those kinds of things as well. And as I mentioned, you can you can also build your own. Um, so finding help, right? So this to me is important. Uh, when I'm trying to learn a new language or I'm trying to get some familiarity with uh, a particular command, you know, how do I find help, right? Uh, a lot of times I'll go and do a Bing search um, or Google search, right? But <clears throat> the universe of available commandlets is large. Sometimes I don't even know what to search for, right? So, so even if I know the command I'm interested in, uh, the chances of me remembering everything about that command or knowing everything available with that command, it might be low, right? Could be pretty full featured. And if I'm trying to find a new command to know sort of how to do something, um, you know, it would be nice to have uh, options there as well. And that's where the help system comes in, okay? Um, so key commandlets that we're going to talk about here now. And again, I know this isn't dealing, uh, uh, digging uh, deeply into more of the mechanics of PowerShell. Uh, this is an introductory class, but really what we're trying to do is position folks to figure out how to find help so that they can then, uh, as I said before, breadcrumb their way into uh, a deeper level of understanding. Because obviously uh, a full uh, class to sort of cover uh, many of the key features of PowerShell could take, uh, you know, multiple multiple days, multiple hours, 
And so definitely uh, the intent of this is to uh, give you a springboard to help you sort of continue to dig deeper and learn more. Is it still an issue with VMware's module using the same namespace as Hyper-V? I honestly don't know, Matt, that's a good question. I, I honestly don't know. Um, yeah, I, I'd have to do a little research there. Um, Mohammed asks, is this session a part of series? Well, uh, this particular session, I don't know that it's part of a series like this within the reactors, but there are additional, um, you know, sort of learn modules, for example, that you can continue to work your way through relative to, to PowerShell. So the key commandlets we're going to hit here are get help, get command, and get member. So get help. <laughs> Pardon me, helps you quickly locate documentation for a commandlet if it's available. OK, the format of the commandlet is git dash help, and then we pass in a parameter dash name with the name of the commandlet we're interested in learning about. And it's uh, potentially uh, able to display info about the command, like uh, its syntax, any aliases, its arguments, examples, et cetera. Now, what you might get when you execute git help is you might see something like this. It says, hey, it is displaying only partial help. Because in some cases, we need to be able to pull those help uh, files down to our system to make them available within the terminal. That's where update-help can come into play. That can be used if git help doesn't give you, you know, more info or doesn't give you all of the info you were hoping for. If a call to git help doesn't, uh, you know, sort of give you what you're looking for, try running update help to see if that doesn't fix it, right? And then execute get help again. Caveat, update help might, uh, you might receive an error when you execute it. Um, it could be because of a transient network issue. So it might be as simple as just retry it. Or what sometimes happens is that people who are, you know, developers who build these modules, maybe the manifest contains uh, incorrect URLs for the help information. And so when it attempts to download uh, those, uh, it is unable to, you know, sort of find them um, because the um, update help only uh, works once a day, right? So you have to use force. Yes, if uh, you want to sort of have it rerun, then yes, you would you would use force because it it sort of runs, um, you know, one time as it as it finds the available set of updates. Good call out, James. On Mac OS and Linux, uh, you need to specify a UI culture when you run um, update help. Yes, Matt's good call out. Dash online is also more easy to read. I'm going to uh, touch on that in just a bit. So great call out. Um, when we run update help, after that, right, when we attempt, no, no nothing to apologize for. Absolutely great call out. Um, when we run uh, update help, now when we run get help, we might have access to these additional flags that Matt's uh, correctly called out. There's a dash examples, right, which just gives you focused view of the examples. There's a dash detailed, which gives you, you know, a lot of information, dash full, which gives you everything. But as Matt said, it's all displayed within your terminal. If you do dash online, it will launch. So to Matt's point, if we uh, come over here and I do, um, you know, get help uh, dash name, get service, and do uh, online. Actually, we'll come back to that. Hold on. That's really weird. Looks like our shell here is uh, acting up. Let me come back over here. Make this bigger so you can actually see it. It's 
to Matt's point, look, dash online, that command I executed here will actually launch you into the Microsoft documentation page, which has all of the other parts here, right? If I do dash examples, that will show me just the examples. But again, it's showing me right here in the terminal. Uh, I often also use dash online for getting access to a, a maybe more user-friendly view of that help. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, so we talked about that. Great call out, good information. Uh, hopefully you find that useful. Uh, excellent for calling that out, Mast. Um, okay, so let's talk about Git command, right? Like Git help, right? But it gives us access to maybe some more specific detail versus the full documentation. If we use Git command with no parameters, we get all of the commands, which I showed you execution of that a lot, right? We can use a dash name parameter for a specific command. Okay, so let's take a little bit more look here. Uh, it gives us, so if I do, uh, and I'm just going to hang out in here because the shell doesn't seem to be working correct right now. Git command dash name, uh, git service. So it'll give me the command type, its name, version, and source. Okay, so that's great. Um, if, however, I use, sorry, I'm switching around a lot here, I know. But if, however, I use the dash syntax um, flag, it will show me the signature of the, the, the commandlet. And it will show me potentially if there are overloaded versions of that commandlet, it will show me all of the signatures, right? It'll show me what parameters are expected, what data type, which ones are uh, optional, et cetera. So, um, you know, git command can be a powerful command when you, um, you know, want to sort of understand more about what's available, you know, to sort of really blow your mind, you could do git command name, git command, and then we could sort of get command, uh, get information about ourselves using ourselves, which is, you know, a little weird, but uh, very, very powerful. Now, another uh, option or useful option, I'll say, is there's the verb flag that we can use for searching. And there's the dash noun flag. So if we want to look for a command that leverages a specific verb, right, or letters within a specific verb, right, we only know part of it, we can use the dash verb <coughs> flag. Uh, if we have a noun that we're interested in, like DNS or, you know, uh, AZ, um, you know, VPN or, or whatever, we can use the dash noun flag. And that just allows us to filter what we're looking for uh, based on you know, that information. And we'll look at an example of that shortly. Um, Git member. <clears throat> Git member, as we've already sort of looked at, gives us the ability to display underlying .NET types for an object. It's just gonna show us uh, any properties available, any methods available. And it can be uh, very helpful for, uh, you know, determining what is possible with a given type. That's why I think it is uh, of benefit. So given that uh, all everything, including a, a number 19 as an object within PowerShell and .NET, knowing what all we can do with that thing, right, can be very beneficial. Get member is a way for us to find that information out. Uh, we can, uh, you know, here, this example, I used get member dash input object and I use this var. It's going to give me this information. Alternatively, I can pipe uh, the results of a commandlet to get member to get, and we saw that uh, back at the beginning when I said 19 pipe and then get member. Once you know the type, right? dash parameter type can be utilized to get all of the other commands, uh, can be used with git command to find all of the other commandlets that operate on that particular type. So that can be a very powerful feature and tool as well. All right, see how we're doing on time, we're doing okay. So let's go ahead and keep rolling. Um, you can pipe, the results of git member to 
select object, which is another commandlet that allows you to filter down to just specific columns, for example. There's where object, which allows you to filter by more, um, you know, interesting sort of conditional uh, uh, checks. There's sort object. There's a ton of additional uh, commandlets that you can pipe to that would be uh, very, very beneficial. Um, and then you can use this uh, dash member type flag uh, to filter the types of members uh, displayed. Uh, the dash member type flag um, allows you to sort of say, I only want to focus on the uh, methods or I only want to focus on the properties. And let me do this real quick. Um, I actually have from another class that I taught. Bear with me. All right, so let me post this out into the chat. This is uh, a set of slides, a set of exercises, a set of solutions that you might find helpful to sort of dig into more of the depths of PowerShell. So please, that's public out there on GitHub. Feel free to leverage that if you find it useful. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, before we go to our knowledge check, let's just look at, at a couple of other uh, sort of interactive things we might do within PowerShell itself. Um, all right, so I'm going to continue. I don't know what was going on here. It looks like git help is actually calling git member or our, our git command, which is uh, kind of interesting. So I'm going to continue and see if this doesn't clear its way up. Otherwise, I'll just go back to the uh, sort of locally installed. Um, I'm going to skip over this because this basically in words uh, matches up with what I just showed you on the slides. Definitely, as I said, feel free to go back through this, go back through it, read it, you know, absorb it, consume it, utilize it. Um, but, uh, you know, for our purposes today, we've kind of already covered this. So let's move instead all the way down here to uh, this. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure this is going to work. So, all right, so we are going to simply flip over here. So hopefully uh, your shell is not having the same issues that mine is. If so, feel free to use it, but I'm just going to keep these two things kind of running side by side. Uh, instead of using the in-browser version, I'm going to use the one that's locally installed. Um, okay, so <laughs> we talked about uh, finding a command, right? If I want to find commands that operate on files, right? Some type of file, I can use uh, git command dash noun, and then I can use file star, and that's a wild card, right? That'll show me all commands where the noun part of the commandlet starts with the, the letters F-I-L-E, right? So it'll show me this. Um, in terms of um, wild carding, couple of things to keep in mind. There's also a, um, the question mark can be used to wild card a specific character. OK, uh, we can also do a collection of characters using uh, square brackets. So multiple options from a wild carding perspective. But if we go back here, we see the set of available uh, sort of commandlets uh, filtered by the noun part, right? The second part of the commandlet. Some of them uh, are the word file. Some of them have additional text. That's what the wild card gives us, right? Is the ability to see more. All right. Um, so now let's look at a way to sort of, um, you know, even dial in further. So if we wanted to say git command dash verb is git and the noun starts with file, we can, you know, sort of further filter down our results using those helpful flags for searching. OK. We can then use uh, get help. <coughs> so let me clear this. Uh, so get file hash is what we're going to take a quick look at. 
uh, get file hat. Oh, I'm sorry, get help. Can we use the same command for Azure PowerShell? Yeah, there is a lot of. I do a git command here. I obviously have a lot and there are multiple. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to go here, let me copy this. I could use get command. Thing, could paste it and then I could use dash online, which you can't currently see. To see if it actually oh, not get command. That's not what I meant. Sorry, get help. Now it may not have an online copy, but it, it still works, right? Because the um, let's do this update help. When you run update help, you uh, should see sort of a progress bar going across the top here. As I said, you may see errors. I have quite a few things installed on my system, obviously, as you can imagine. Now here are these areas. Wow. Oh, everything blew up. No, it updated what it could, but it may not be able to update everything. After we run update help, we can try running this command again. So there's no, but let's see if there's just uh, help available for it. So there is help available. Um, um, there are examples. Um, I can pipe this to more. To do more of a um, so it's searching for help to do more of a paging so it doesn't have any examples available there that's okay uh, if I did get help with more like this let's see if we, oh I've got the wrong command here my fault there we go only one example not super helpful. But um, <clears throat> yes, uh, to answer your question, Mohammed, you can use these same sort of help commands with the Azure PowerShell as well. Hopefully that answered your question. All right, so if I want to get help with this, uh, you're welcome, no problem. Good, great question. So if I want to do get help using get file hash, so I can see all of this information. And again, it's, you know, I got to scroll up and down maybe. One of the things you can do, or a couple of things you can do, I can use the help alias, which it calls out here, right? If I use help get file hash, that will um, give me uh, more of a, let me drop this down so you can see the bottom. That will give me more of a paged view. Okay. So that's what the help alias does. But then also, as I said, you can use uh, pipe more, which will do something very similar. Okay. Um, let's keep moving here because we are quickly running out of time. So here's the Git pro uh, or Git member. Let's talk about this. This I think is uh, pretty interesting. Oh, not there. Issues with this. Let's clear it. So if I run Git process, it's going to show me all of the processes running on my current machine, which obviously are a lot. Let me scroll back up to the top here. Um, and I don't know, we'll pick one here, right? So what we can do is pick a process name and get its members. So if I do, uh, you can do select object dot first 10. Let's just do the first 10. Here I could say, you know, get process dash name, let's use this audio. I don't even know what this is, DG. And then pipe that to get member. We'll see that it is of type process. And then here are uh, all of the available properties, events and methods that underlie that .NET type, right? Which could be very, very powerful uh, for our purposes. Um, what we can then do is we can say, okay, we know the type, uh, we know the type is process. If I clear this and I type git command parameter type process, 
that will show me commandlets that are available for operating um, on an actual process object, right? Which is uh, potentially very, very important and very helpful. Okay, so <clears throat> hopefully uh, this has kind of given you a sense of sort of what you can use in terms of finding additional assistance. Please, uh, let's, oh, we're going to go ahead and get ready to wrap up because we're just about out of time. You know, go back and reread this. Take a look at that information that I sent on at that uh, GitHub repo if that's helpful. But let's, uh, let's do a quick knowledge check. So back here within our learn module, let's test ourselves. All right. <clears throat> Using the help system, what command or function helps you paginate the response? Is it command dash dash help, get dash help command, or help and then command? Well, we saw that we could use pipe and the keyword more to uh, paginate, but we also said that there's an alias, the help alias will paginate for us. And then which statement will most efficiently find the returned type from a command? Is it command dash dash type, command pipe get dash member, command pipe get dash type, or command get dash member? And we said that one of the things that git member does right at the top, right, is give us the type of that particular uh, object, right? So this one should be correct. We check our answers. Yay, we got them right. Now let's uh, go ahead and wrap up with a summary. Uh, Maria has uh, already uh, put something out that's going to be very, very important. Uh, what did we cover? We covered PowerShell as a shell and scripting platform. We talked about commandlets uh, that include commandlets we can use for getting uh, help. Uh, next steps, please feel free to reread and rewalk through that learn module. Take a look at that GitHub repo. Uh, the other thing you might find helpful uh, is something like a cheat sheet. Uh, my window. If you hit this, for example, you might find uh, a useful cheat sheet with sort of some uh, common commandlets that we might use uh, as we work within PowerShell. Um, and then uh, I'm going to leave. If there are any questions, great. Uh, Moria put it out here, but please fill out this survey. Use uh, 13060 as the event code. That's your opportunity to share with us, you know, what you thought, what you think uh, speaks to you, what, you know, kinds of topics and information you'd like to cover off on going forward. Because again, this is a community driven, you know, we're all community members that are driving this. So what is going to be, you know, useful to you, beneficial to you, please leverage that survey. In the last minute or two, because we're just about out of time, are there any final questions? All right. Well, it has truly been a pleasure for me to be here with you. I hope you got uh, something out of this that was useful. Uh, please take a look at those follow-up uh, materials. Please uh, fill out that survey. Uh, is it possible to watch the session on demand? Yes, uh, I believe there will be, uh, Moria, there will be, uh, it will be posted to YouTube. Is that correct? Yes, it will be available on our YouTube channel probably within uh, one or two days. Okay, great. There you go. All righty. Well, thanks, folks, very much for your time. It was, again, a pleasure being with you. And uh, good luck on your PowerShell journey. <laughs>